Hi, do you understand how these three light testers work? If not, they can really mislead you and send you on a wild goose chase. By the end of this video, you're going to understand exactly how they work and they're going to be a lot more useful to you. We're going to use my light board and I'm going to set up every single wiring configuration and I'm going to show you what readings these will give you. And I think you'll be surprised by some of these readings. Whether you're a home inspector, an electrician, or a homeowner trying to solve a problem, knowing how these things work is going to make you a lot more effective at the job you're doing. Basically, these things work like three separate voltage testers. One of the voltage testers tests between the hot and the ground, and if there's about 120 volts, this light will come on. One tests between the hot and the neutral, and if there's about 120 volts, this light comes on. And one tests between the neutral and the ground, and if there's about 120 volts there, then this red light comes on. That's all these things do. And they can only tell you one problem on any receptacle. Let's say you've got a receptacle that's got an open ground and it's also wired with reverse polarity. All this is going to tell you is that there's an open ground. It'll completely miss the fact that it's got reverse polarity. So if you're trying to fix a problem, you're going to fix the open ground and then maybe if you test it again, then you'll realize that it's also got reverse polarity. But if you understand how these work and what the limitations are, you're going to be able to do your job a lot better. So let's go to the test board and set up these wiring configurations and I think you're really going to be surprised at what you see. Okay, so here's a part of my test board. I've got part of it covered just because we're not going to be using it. All I'm going to use really is this one. But right here we'll show how this is wired. You can see green to green, black to black, white to white. So this currently is wired properly. I've got three different testers. I've got a Cobalt, a Sperry, and a Klein and they all work identically to each other. So this is wired up properly. I'm not going to plug in all three of the testers, at least especially on this one, because it's going to be rather boring. Both lights light up. And according to the legend here, these two lights indicate that it's wired correctly. We already knew that. Okay, let's change the wiring configuration. Okay, you can see I've disconnected the ground. So let's see what we get. As expected, we get one light showing that there's voltage between the hot and the neutral, but no voltage between the hot and the ground because there's no connection to the ground. And if we touch these together, then obviously that light will come on. Okay, let's go to the next wiring configuration. Okay, so I've reconnected the ground wires, but now we've got black to white and white to black. So we've got a reverse polarity situation. Let's plug this in and see what it shows. Okay, so the red light comes on to indicate that there's 120 volts between the neutral and the ground prong. And the center light comes on to tell us that there's 120 volts between the neutral and the hot. But what happens if we disconnect the ground wire? we get the center light. And according to the legend, that just shows that there's an open ground. This tells us nothing about having a reverse polarity. And that's what I'm talking about as far as a limitation on these three light testers is it'll only tell you one problem. It cannot tell you if there's a reverse polarity on an ungrounded receptacle. That's because this light tells you that there's 120 volts between the hot and the neutral, but it doesn't know which of those two is the hot and which one's the neutral. It has to have a ground wire connected to tell you if there's a 120 volts between the neutral and the ground or between the hot and the ground, and only then can it tell you if there's a reverse polarity. So this is a big limitation of these things. Okay, let's go to the next wiring configuration. Okay, so now we've got an open neutral got the hots connected, we've got the grounds connected, but the neutrals are not connected. This light right here comes on telling us that there's a voltage difference between the hot and the ground, but it's not detecting a voltage difference between the hot and the neutral because the neutral is not connected. So that's why you only get this one light. So now let me show you another interesting thing with this. Okay, so we've still got the open neutral, and I said I wasn't going to use the rest of this board, but for this demonstration, I do need to. So, it still shows open neutral. I've gotten a lamp, 
and I'm bypassing this GFCI and I'll explain why momentarily. So this receptacle feeds this one. So anyway, I've got the lamp plugged in downstream of the open neutral. Right now the lamp is turned off. This is showing open neutral. I'm gonna turn the lamp on now. Can you see that light on right there? What do these two lights mean? Well, let me show you. The right hand amber light and the red light together are hot ground reverse. Now we have nothing close to a hot ground reverse. We have voltage on the hot wire and on the neutral wire, but we have no voltage on the ground wire. And I have a completely different video on hot ground reverses explaining all this. But I just want you to see, if I get this plugged in, that these things can give you very confusing indications if you don't understand them. So while this shows a hot ground reverse, all we have is an open neutral with a load plugged in downstream of that neutral. And let me show you something while I've got this. You have 120 volts on this neutral. That's because it's fed through this load that's turned on and comes back and since no current is flowing past this point to go back to the panel, you don't have a voltage drop, so you have 120 volts. So you have 120 volts on the neutral and on the hot, zero on the ground, and that gives you the reading of a hot ground reverse. Let me take about a minute to explain how you can get a hot ground reverse reading when all you have is a disconnected neutral. So I've got these two pictures that are from my blog. If the slot has a red circle around it, then that means it has 120 volts on it. If it's green, then that means it has zero volts. So on the correctly wired with the disconnected neutral, you have 120 volts at both the hot and the neutral slot, and you have zero at the ground slot. And with a hot ground reverse, you obviously have 120 volts on the ground and zero on the hot slot. So you can see how these would give the identical readings because you have a 120 volt difference between the ground and the neutral and between the hot and the ground in both pictures. That's why a disconnected neutral with a load plugged in and turned on would give you the exact same reading as a hot ground reverse. And by the way, I can't think of a scenario where you would actually have a hot ground reverse in reality. I'd say 99.99% .99 of the time, if you get a hot ground reverse reading, you're gonna have a disconnected neutral. And I have a completely separate video on this, but I just wanted to throw this in to make this video complete. Okay, we've actually covered all the different scenarios on this, but I've got a crazy one for you. This is something you're never gonna see in real life, but it'll, test you to see if you understand how these work. Okay, I've got this hot wire connected to the hot, the ground, and the neutral. So we have voltage on all three of these slots. Are all the lights gonna come on on this? What's gonna happen? Let's see. Not a single light comes on, even though there's 120 volts on every slot. Why is that? It's because there is no voltage difference between any of the slots. You can have a million volts on each of these slots and this will not light up. So that's another limitation that these have. You cannot use these always to test to see if you've got voltage before doing any work. These non-contact voltage detectors are very important as well as part of the inspection or testing process. Like on this one, which is wired correctly, you can see there's no voltage here or on the ground, but you've got voltage on the hot slot just like you should. But without this, just using this, you would never know that there's 120 volts on all three slots. So that's all these things do is have three lights to light up to tell you if there is a voltage difference between the ground and the neutral, between the neutral and the hot, and between the hot and the ground. That's all these things tell you. So there are some serious limitations to these. 
But if you understand what they do and what they don't, then they can be a good tool for you, whether you're an electrician, a home inspector, or whatever. But I would certainly recommend using a non-contact voltage detector as well, uh, depending on what you're doing. One thing I didn't show you on the test board is that these things cannot test an ungrounded GFCI receptacle. What they do is that it has a resistor inside. When you push this button, it connects the hot to the ground to bleed off just a little bit of current to set up the current difference between the hot and the neutral. And that's how a GFCI detects that there's a ground fault and it'll trip. Well, if there's no wire connected to the ground slot, this cannot bleed off any current. So you cannot use these to test GFCIs if they're not grounded. I just wanted to throw that out before I close this video. Okay, so I, I hope this has been beneficial to you. I hope you've learned something. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you have a great day. Thank you.